been to the UK twice looking for work. This was the second time. The first time I went there, which was a shock, I went to the BBC and met with a guy there who was their program controller for Radio 1. And uh, it was the most bizarre meeting I think I've ever had. Um, first of all, it was like he wouldn't tell me how much anyone got paid. And if I did get a job, how much I get paid, I had to guess it. Um, and then I went to the studios and looked around and they, they just installed these amazing turntables. And this was 1986, I think. And I'm looking at it going, what? Why are they, being, why are they installing turntables? Everyone's gone playing CDs. I don't, this is bizarre. So it was all very strange. So that didn't work out. But in the mid-90s, a lot of Australians had moved to the UK and were programming radio stations. Richard Branson had employed one of the programmers out of Sydney that I'd worked with set up the Virgin Radio uh, station in London. Um, so that was where I was kind of hoping I could get in. Uh, but I did end up talking with a, a, a radio station, I had a meeting with them at Jazz, um, trying to talk to them about how, because the licenses are really strange there. You, you get a Jazz license and that's it. You can't play anything else and you can't change format. Um, mm. So I was talking to them about why don't you look at all the, you know, sort of popular songs that have a jazz beat? So get a musician and a lawyer and then, boom, you know, you can play Sting, Sade, yeah. all sorts of stuff. But that didn't happen either. So, yeah, it didn't work out. And and um, and the culture is different. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't mind it. and I, I've sort of got a foot in both camps, so 